are we live? Solo amor, solo amor. Live. En vivo, en vivo. <laughs> solo amor, only love. Okay, hi guys. Good afternoon. That's my Rhythmia Facebook Live song. So, in case you want to know at the beginning of this live just now, um, that was Juan Carlos that we saw at the beginning and he was leaving and I was thanking him for a job well done today and his response was solo amor, only love. Because that is the food philosophy here at Rhythmia. Only love, the secret ingredient is love. Right Kenneth? Right. Kenneth, say hello to our viewers. Hey everybody, hello. <laughs> what up? Okay, so calling us up over on the Rhythmia Facebook page. So I was just live on my own personal Facebook page to let my, my dear friends and family know to join us. So where are you friends and family? Where are you? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're live. Bon me crazy. This is my lame play on words. We're doing bon me sandwiches. And if you're not familiar, I was explaining to a few people today what a bon me sandwich is. And I'm, well, I'm not a professional when it comes to Vietnamese cuisine. I'm a professional when it comes to carbs. <laughs> Call me carboholic. Are you, are you moving with me, Kenneth? It doesn't even look like you're moving. It's like my mom. When she mm. remember my mom? Mm -hmm. Mom! Hey mom! No, you know, mom doesn't follow me anyway. Mom's probably gonna watch and she's gonna be mad at me for teasing her. Okay, I'm gonna call out this. Who's watching? Oh my god, we got lots of people watching again. We got Melissa watching, Shauna watching, Melissa saying hello, Penny Jane Herman, Lisa's watching, Joelle is watching. Hi Joelle. Mirka's watching from Finland. Artie is trucking all over Charleston, South Carolina. Wow, Jeff Clark is watching. Jeff saying hello. Joe is watching. Melissa is watching from Austin, Texas. Where's everybody else watching from? Give me a holla. Holla, holla. Okay, so Jeff is watching from Orlando. Mid-November already, right? What is today's date? November 18th. Almost like 10 more. No, how many days are in November? 30. 30. 12 more days of November, and then we're already in December of 2018. Where is the time going? Holy jumping. Don't remember where I was going just now. Not important. I do know that my lips are parched. So I'm gonna put on some, some some gloss. And then we're gonna get right into the recipes today. I told Kenneth this is gonna be a short one. For me, are many reasons. Mainly because I am talking my brain off today and I'm having trouble with guests. And I've just been running around all morning since eight o'clock. Losing my words, losing my capability to hold a sentence together. Tammy's watching and she says, hi, hi Megan, Kenneth, see you in three weeks. Tammy, you're coming. In three weeks. What week will that be? That will be, was that Taito week in December? When is that? When are you coming, Tammy? Nancy's watching from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Penny's watching from Vermont. Julie's watching from Arlington, Texas. Dee Dee's watching from Oklahoma. Lisa's watching from Michigan. You guys! Joe's watching from Cali. I love this. This makes me so happy. Um, okay, what was I saying? Getting down to the, to the facts. We're making sandwiches, so let's just get into making sandwiches. This is a Vietnamese-style sandwich. sandwich. Case in point, I can't talk. Sandwich. Um, and from the, the small amount of research that I know, I'm gonna turn that up a bit. Um, bon Mi, which is the name of the sandwich. When I left Canada back in 2013, Bon Mi's had been a thing for about a year or two. Um, and there were all these Bon Mi sandwich shops opening up for like street food in, in, in Toronto. And a lot of people were heading to Bon Mi shops after the bar for their midnight snacks. It's around the same time that poutine became a big thing in Toronto. But I was looking up uh, a while back when I first started exploring these, what banh mi meant. And banh mi is actually the Vietnamese for just bread. Uh, but we've taken to believe banh mi sandwiches are the specific type of sandwich they're about to make a version of here today that has a protein, pickled vegetables, and a, and a spicy mayonnaise. But banh mi actually translates to bread. And if you're, I guess if you're in Vietnam and you talk about um, banh mi for breakfast, it's a bread and meat sandwich. When you talk banh mi for lunch, it's a different meaning. But banh mi really just means bread. And it's fun to say banh mi. B-A-H-N space M-E, banh mi. Banh mi, so crazy. Let's slow down. Time is say yes, tight a week. Tight a week. Oh my gosh, Tammy, that's gonna be amazing. Jennifer Joanne Williams says they are bomb.com. Joanne's watching from Boston. Nasuf is watching. Huh, <sighs> amazing. Okay, so back to the facts. So bon me means bread. So I'm going to be doing my bon me two different versions. This is not your traditional bon me by any stretch of the imagination. We're doing a plant-powered Meg style version. Um, I've got two different three different types of bread here. I've got some regular old glutton-filled glutton, gluten-filled bread, 
We've got our white as well as some really nice seedy grain bread. And then over here, I've got something that's a bit more banh mi style because typically it's a baguette that we use. So I've got a, like a really soft, fluffy baguette. And if you Google banh mi sandwiches, you're gonna see that it's traditionally on a special Vietnamese type bun that is this kind of a squishy, a squishy white bun. So we're gonna be using two different versions of bread here to make our sandwiches today. But for now, I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna get to making our fillings. So I was thinking about doing a tofu filling one instead of using chicken or pork, but today we are going to do a cauliflower. So it's gonna be super veg filled. This is gonna be, we're gonna have our, our awesome carbs from our bread and then the filling is going to be a mostly um, plant-based, vegetable rich filling as well. Does that even, what am I talking about? Who cares? Let's see if there's anything, who cares? Who cares, who cares what I'm talking about? I'm just live on Facebook. It's not important what I'm saying. Okay, my mom's watching. My mom says, hello, Uggsy, I am watching. Terry Pearson. So get this, Uggsy. Uggsy is what my family called me growing up. I think my sister started calling me that, and I'm not sure why. Mom, and maybe you can type a quick little message, Mom, where it came from originally, but Uggsy as in ugly. It's my nickname. My mom also called me Gnome, I believe, was the nickname that my mom called me. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Oh, God, let's show it, let's show it. Little commercial break here to show you a dinosaur in the garden. We have a dinosaur among us. Don't. This little friend come in. Can you get it from the other angle? So this is one of our beach side dinosaur, cool side dinosaurs. See that? Can you see it? Look at that guy. So prehistoric. One of our amazing friends. Can you see it? Hey dude. Wow, they're such like little dinosaurs. Doesn't get old, does it? Does not get old. He's coming, he heard we were making banh mi. He's like, hit me. I like banh mi. <laughs> okay, little commercial break. Could you guys see that? I couldn't see because of the sun. Could everyone see? It's so funny. I'm like, could you guys see the iguana? And I look, and the first comment is Jennifer Joe Jennifer Joe saying, "Ooh, yummy!" <laughs> On my way. We're not gonna eat the iguana. <laughs> okay, Terry Pearson says, "My mom says no." So Uggsy was short for Maggie Muggins. Someone who used to be on TV before I was born. So that's where that comes from. It doesn't have anything to do with me being ugly. Maggie Muggins. I'm gonna have to Google that. This is why it pays to ask questions. I've always thought that they were calling me ugly. ugly. Hang on. Kristen, Christina's saying, wow, neat lizard. Kelly Lewis is saying, awesome. He's cool, yeah, Tammy. The, you're gonna see tons of these iguanas when you come down here with a bunch of them. They just hang out by the pool and take up scraps and stuff. But they're just like, I can't, like every time I see them, it's like, those are like dinosaurs. Those are like present day dinosaurs hanging around here. Costa Rica, Pura Vida. Back to the topic at hand. What were we, where was I? I was talking about the banh mis. Mm. And the bread. And as for the fillings, we're gonna do three things today. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make quick pickles. Because one of the main components of a banh mi is the pickled vegetables, and it's a really, 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 really easy, quick pickle. So I've just got um, a plastic chafing here. This is going to be used for a mixing vessel if you had a bowl, any old bowl at home. Anytime I'm doing any sort of pickling with a lot of vinegar, I try to avoid metal. So I use plastic or glass. So today I'm using this really, because it's a quick pickle, I don't mind that I'm using plastic. Um, if it was going to sit for much longer than a few minutes, I would put it into a, some sort of glass container. But the first thing I'm going to add in here is some rice vinegar. And this is some, look at that. Can you see the bits and bops floating around in that? That is some fermented goodness right there. So this is an, a rice vinegar, which is really popular in a lot of Asian dishes. So that's going to be the base of our pickling liquid. If you don't have rice vinegar and you have like apple cider, that will be fine too, which most people have are more apt to have apple cider vinegar kicking around in the kitchen. Um, so, but we have, because we have the rice, which I have a bottle. Yeah, and it just, like this is a, like, I found this in the sushi, like the Japanese aisle at my local grocery store here in Costa Rica. So if you can't find rice vinegar in your regular vinegar, hey Dan, how are you? Good to see you. Um, if you can't find it in the regular vinegar section, you can check out the Asian section where you would buy your nori and your pickled ginger and all of that. And quite often that's where you'll find your rice vinegar. That's where I found mine. So we got our rice vinegar here. I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of uh, just some raw sugar. So this is raw organic cane sugar. I'm just gonna add in like a teaspoon of this just for that sweet and sour component. And then a pinch of salt. Just all pickling liquids, you need to have a little bit of salt. And then we need the rest of our flavoring, our actual ingredients that we're gonna pickle. So I'm just stirring up that, gla uh, that glass. 
sugar, it looks like little crystallized glass, and just stirring that up to try to break that down and let the vinegar absorb that sweetness. Then we're gonna add in our vegetables. So I've already gone ahead and grated some carrots. This is some grated carrot, finely grated. Plop that in. And then for our next vegetable, I'm gonna use just a, this is a field cucumber. So I'm gonna peel half of it using my trusty Y peeler. I'm just gonna go for half of it, get that out of the way. And I'm gonna cut off the end. Yoink. And then I've got my mandolin. So this is a handy dandy tool. You can see, look at how stained and discolored this is because I've used this to chop and mandolin vegetables for years. I've had this for probably four years. I picked it up super cheap at a grocery store in, Can in Toronto, Canada. And it's, what I love about this is it's super lightweight, so it travels well. I bring it with me when I'm doing traveling and cooking. And right here, it's got this little button, like this little round knob that when you, as you spin it, it's adjusting this green plate up and down. So that's what's adjusting. Can you see that? It's adjusting the thickness of my slices. So I want a, about a medium, medium slice. And what I need to do is just give it a check. So this is a little bit thick for my liking, so I'm gonna, thin it out a little bit and I don't know about you but one of my favorite things still to this day and I think I used to love it as a kid mom correct me if I'm wrong because I know you're still watching um, just cucumber slices like this in white vinegar and a pinch of sea salt one of my favorite snacks it's just so refreshing and light and delicious and then so these beautiful thin slices of cucumber is gonna drop into my vinegar uh, carrot mixture you gonna do a tiny bit more and once you get this, all these vegetables in the, in the pickling liquid, by the way, this would be good in the fridge for like a week. They make it, they'll get softer and softer, but more flavorful as the time goes by. And then we're going to add in a little bit of heat, our first round of heat with some jalapeno. 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 <laughs> jalapeno. Do you remember those, what was it, a potato chip commercial? Dorito? No, sorry, I mean nacho chip commercial. Where was the woman like, oh, jalapeno peppers, jalapeno. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a slice. And these are gonna give a little bit of heat to the pickling liquid and they're also gonna look really pretty on our sandwich and, and be, taste really good. Ooh, this is a spicy jalapeno, I can smell it. Can you smell that, mm -hmm. Kenneth? This is, we're not messing around, whoops. So that is the sign that I'm not gonna do any more of that. <laughs> Set all the way, peelings over here. Those will be, this will be good iguana food later, all of these scraps. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of lime juice just for a little bit of a different, actually, before I do that, I wanna reserve some of the rind for our marinade for our cauliflower. So this is amazing, big, massive, organic lime. And I'm just gonna right here onto my cutting board, zest it a little bit again using my rasp, my microplane. I use this all the time for everything from grating um, garlic and ginger, which I'm gonna be using it for in, to zesting my, my citrus. I just want to gather up a little bit using my knife here to gather. Look at that. And then I'm just going to set this aside right here for now. Saving that for later. That's perfect. Now I'm going to take my lime. Look at that. Oh, it smells like candy. So good. And I'm just going to squeeze half of that into my pickling liquid. Yummo. So good. Perfect. That's all we need. So this is our quick pickles doing their thing and we're just gonna let them sit for a bit while we get the the rest of our fillings going a bada boom bada bing like quick pickle and when I mean quick I mean quick so the next thing we're gonna do is make our mayonnaise sack when I did this at home the other day I used uh, vegan A's which is like a vegan mayonnaise uh, you could use regular mayonnaise that's traditionally what we'd use here but since we're doing things from scratch we're making it super plant-based we're going to make our own and it's going to be a very similar recipe than what you've seen here before on on the show on the facebook live stream i'm grabbing my high powered blender and i'm going to make a cashew mayonnaise so here i've got my cashews these are not raw and they are not soaked because it doesn't always have to be <laughs> because this is what i had on hand so about two cups clove of garlic pinch of salt Sound effects optional. Mom said, yes, you did like it, especially fresh cubes from the garden. Yeah, growing up, my mom had the most epic garden. My favorite thing was to just go out there as a kid, pull carrots out of the mud, wash them under the garden hose. They'd still have like remnants of dirt on them and eat them. That was like the best. And fresh peas from the pod from the garden. So good. Let's see who else is having anything to say. 
Um, George Bell is saying, hey, from the great white north. I see it's quite white these days, George. My mom has been posting pictures on Instagram. It's like so much snow. I'm coming to Canada in two weeks. Two weeks this Tuesday I'll be in Canada. So let's all do the no snow dance, shall we? Mainly because I don't remember how to drive in snow. And I've got a car rental car <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> and I don't want to crash. And we all know how my track record with vehicles and crashes. I have scars to prove it. Tiffany Lynn, I love you, Tiffany. She's saying yum, yum, yum. Sydney's watching and she says she's coming in April. Awesome. Mo Moses is giving us a thumbs up. Salvador saying hello. Kristen's saying she likes my sound effects. Jody's saying hello. Awesome. Okay, so back to the recipe. So what do we got in here? We have cashews, salt, and a clove of garlic. And now I'm just gonna add in some water and this is gonna be what helps us blend this together. Not too much, because I don't want this to be runny. This is a mayonnaise. Huh? Lid on, careful, it's gonna get loud. this a version of this for many years and I think I've, that was the first time ever I have the exact perfect water to cashew ratio on the first try that looks pretty good it's taken me <laughs> taken me 10 years to figure it out so I'm just gonna put this into a bowl here and then I'm gonna add in the rest of our ingredients getting in there with my spoon around the blade to get all of this goodness from the bottom Cashews are costly and delicious. You don't want to waste a thing. Into the bowl, and I'm going to immediately, whenever I'm using this blender, I immediately will run water down so we can start loosening up any of the bits around the blade. Because if you haven't, you know, if you're not familiar with this type of blender, the base does not come off. Like with traditional home blenders, you unscrew the base, you can wash the blade and everything by hand. But with these super high powered ones, the base is screwed right on there because it's so powerful that if we had, if this was something that was easily separated, the motor itself would just spin the whole blender apart. So the actual blade is attached, you know, permanently to the bottom. So you just, when you're washing it, you have to wash it with the, with the blade attached. So soaking it is a great tip. And also another way to help, if you feel like the stuff is stuck down there, put water in your blender and then blend it on a low speed and then gradually improve it, uh, improve it. Increase the speed and then the, just the power of the blender itself will start loosening up bits around the blade. So that's just a little clean up, clean up tip for y'all. For y'all. Coconut water break. Okay, so this was just a really simple cashew mayonnaise. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Kind of think I'll try that. It's so good. Oops. Like I could just eat bowls of that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? It's so good. Three ingredients. So good. But we're not stopping there. So we have a lot of sour notes in that pickle and we have a lot of bit of spiciness in that pickle. So I really like to balance that out with a bit of sweetness. So right here I've got some raw organic honey. Um, you could sub that maple syrup is a really great, I, great use, um, great ingredient to use if you're not eating honey or agave or any other kind of liquid sweetener you want to use. So I'm just adding that in and that's going to help cut the heat because sriracha, because sriracha. It's the answer to everything in life. And this is really to taste. I like to add a lot because I, you know, I kick myself for it. I'm, I'm always regretting the heat that I add to food, but I love it when it's going in and then moments later I regret it. And I also like the color that it gives. So this is our sriracha mayonnaise. So good. I'm going to add a bit more. <laughs> So good. And this is gonna be our, so now our, may our mayonnaise is done. And this mayonnaise would be great on any sandwich, not just a banh mi. It's a great dip. It's great for many, many, many things. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Uh, over here, away from the heat. So next component is our filling. And traditionally this would be a chicken or a pork um, filling, I believe. Um, but today we're doing plant-based. So we're, we're gonna get this, this pan here we've got heating up. And we're gonna work on a marinade, but instead of actually marinating our cauliflower, which is our meat substitute, we're gonna make the marinade, cook it down so it gets nice and syrupy, and then I'm gonna add the cauliflower. Because I have chosen to be super lazy, and I have steamed cauliflower that I just took right off the buffet. <laughs> because the last minute we realized we didn't have any tofu, so this was a scramble, and I was like, what am I gonna do? And I, instead of even taking the time to chop some fresh cauliflower, I just stole some pre-cooked stuff. So 
ideally what I would do if I didn't have pre-cooked cauliflower is I would slice up the cauliflower raw, start cooking it, and then add my marinade ingredients in as it's cooking. But because it's already cooked, I'm just going to do my marinade, heat it through, get it to the consistency I want, and then let it coat my cauliflower. So what is in the marinade, aka sauce, you ask? Well, many, many, many beautiful things. First and foremost, ginger. So we haven't added any ginger, really popular in Asian dishes. This is an awesome organic root. Look at how beautiful it is. The skin is super, super thin, so I'm not even going to peel it because it's so perfect. Um, and I'm just gonna grate that right onto my cutting board next to my lime. This is what's nice too about having these massive cutting boards, whether it's wood or plastic, whatever you have, is you can do a lot of your prep and instead of having you know to place everything into bowls and cups, like I've got a lot of my mise en place, my ingredients here, um, you can just do this and it just saves you dirtying dishes. Just scrape, see I've got some stuck on the back here. Just scrape that off. I'm gonna do same thing with some garlic, so I've got this massive garlic clove. And these are all going into the same place at the end, so I'm not worrying about keeping them separate. So look at that. Again, look at how look at the ease by which I mince my garlic and ginger by using this rasp instead of struggling with a knife. Come on, kids. If you're not doing this already, start doing it. And now I'm gonna actually put this under water because, because these teeth are so fine. Um, I like I'm lazy and I don't want to spend time scrubbing this later, so I'm just gonna run it under water real quick right now. And because it's made of stainless steel. You don't really need to worry too much about the soap and stuff as long as you get your hand in there um, and it's not going to retain the stinkiness of the garlic and the ginger. Because I don't know if you've seen or heard, but to remove stinky garlic scent from your hands, they tell you to touch like your stain is still faucet or run your hands over a knife. Or you can buy silly big like round pieces of stainless steel to keep in your kitchen so that the stainless steel removes the, the garlic scent. Okay, so I've got this heating up in a medium heat. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water into this into this warm pan you know it's hot when it starts to sizzle and that's just I'm not gonna add any extra oil because oil is one of the ingredients in the actual marinade so I'm gonna add in my garlic and my lime and my ginger just start letting that cook down a bit thank you I didn't bring a spatula or anything so just use the spoon turn that heat up just a titch and that's just gonna start to slowly cook down and then I'm gonna add in a few flavor ingredients so this is the oil that I was just speaking about, which is a sesame oil, and I'm going to use that last. And I just got it, it comes in like little jars like this. You don't need a lot, it's super, super powerful, um, keeping that handy. But I am going to add in some more sweetening agent, and this is uh, honey. So I'm going to add this in, again for that sweet and savory, and soy sauce. Yummo. Like that. And I've got this cranked up to high. I'm gonna let this start to cook now. We want to get this because of that honey, it's gonna quickly, rather quickly, well, depending on how my hot plate cooperates, it's gonna turn into a bit of a glaze. And then we're gonna add in that sesame oil, and that's just gonna be a bit of a flavor. Ooh, so good. I feel like it's I've cranked the heat and it's gone down in temperature. <laughs> there we go. Look at those bubbles starting to form. Delicious. So as that starts to do its thing. Um, I'm going to take some of my veggies out of the pickling liquid using the best tool that I know, my hands, squeeze out excess liquid. Now traditionally you would also use um, radish, daikon radish, which is the white radish you may have seen in the grocery store, also goes into this pickling liquid or regular red radishes. I like to use red radishes because they're really pretty, but I forgot to bring them in. I bought some and they're sitting up on my crisper. Poor Vita. It's just another texture and it's a bit more spice because if you're familiar with radishes, they have a nice spicy taste to them. Let's see who else, what else is going on over here while we're waiting for that sauce. Leona, Leone saying hi, Meg, sending you love, miss you, and love watching you live. We miss you too. Miss you too. How long ago was it that she was here? Three weeks? Has it been three weeks already? Potentially. Time is a vortex. So that's starting to smell really good already. Look at that. Bubbling up. So, so, so good. So, our components so far. Pickling, pickled vegetables. Hi, guys. <laughs> This is a cashew sriracha mayonnaise. I'm also gonna be adding onto the roster some pickled red onions because I don't have the red radishes in my pickling vegetables. I decided to add these in for color and as well as a bit of a different taste. 
And I'm going to be topping my sandwich, which is with something that is a little bit unconventional, sunflower sprouts. Uh, sorry, pea sprouts. These are pea sprouts. And because, as I mentioned, we don't have any cilantro, I'm swapping in fresh basil, which is really good. Thai basil would be even better if we had Thai basil, but we don't. And this is a great option because there's a lot of cilantro haters out there. So this is a really great option. Look at the size of that basil leaf. What? What? And there's a hole in it from a bug that ate it, but this is because organic, this is what happens. We don't kill the pests. We are one with the pests. We just give them a good wash and pure vita. I'm going to keep a couple of these whole. And then I'm just going to give the rest a quick knife run through. Using a very loose chiffonade here. Not doing anything too crazy. And this is just going to be a little topper for our sandwiches. Look at that. So good, right? Look at the colors. This is smelling phenomenal. Hey, Kenneth? Yeah. Look yeah. at that. You can see it's getting a little bit thick bubbles it's getting a little bit syrupy so this is about the time that I ask myself the question do I want to do just cauliflower or do I want to add in a bit more plant-based protein with some chickpeas what do you think Kenneth should we go for a bit of chickpeas chickpeas toss in a tiny bit of those just for a little bit more texture and protein why not and then we'll add in some of this cauliflower this is my pre-cooked Bite-sized pieces because they're going in a sandwich I made this on Friday night for my friend who was over and we my friend my man friend um, and we, I didn't slice anything up small enough, so it was a freaking mess, to say the least. So I'm tossing in some of that. A bada boom bada bing. Starting, and then look at that. Look at that. Who needs pork or chicken, right? This is all the flavors. I mean, really, pork and chicken don't have that much taste anyways. It's really about what you put on them, right? Especially chicken breasts. So, covering a nice meaty vegetable like cauliflower and chickpeas in this super flavorful, syrupy, yummy marinade. I mean, who needs the meat? Okay, just like that, my friends. Okay, so now we get to the assembly phase. Heather's saying, my husband is an executive chef. Everything in a specialty farm to table, swap to table. That's amazing. What is, I can't see the rest of the comment. I'll have to answer that afterwards because my Facebook, my iPad only lets me see the first couple lines. So I'm going to grab my two versions here. I'm going to do two. I don't know why I'm doing two. I'm going to just do one. I have all these bread options because I was going to try to do the tofu as well. But we don't have the tofu, so we're not going to. So I got my little banh mi bun here, and I'm just going to cut it. This is not a bread knife, but it's doing the job. And I'm not going to cut it all the way through. Da, 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 da. And if this was a super fresh, fluffy bun, that would be more, more the style of the banh mi. Um, but I'm leaving the one end closed because that will just help with the eating. But what I like to do is when I really want to stuff a sandwich full, is get in there and remove some of the bread. Don't, I, I'm going to eat the bread. We want to eat the bread. We don't want to throw it away, but it's just going to make more room for filling, which is a great little secret. So getting rid of some of this excess bread here. So we got more of a boat to fill with the goodness. And we're going to add in some of our sriracha mayonnaise. What? So Kenneth, you know what, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna make this and this is your lunch. So then I'm gonna take the camera and we're gonna have you taste it on camera. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I feel happy today. You yeah. feel happy? Yeah. You're down with that? You bought a boom, bought a bing. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do one on bread for you, Kenneth, because I want to take a photo of this when it's done to post in the comments so people can remember what we did. So we're doing two versions here. This is the bread sandwich one for you, Kenneth. Freshly toasted bread. Be generous with the mayonnaise, kids. <laughs> this is what we don't tell our kids. Be generous with the junk food, kids. It's not junk food, it's made of cashews. Um, and then I'm gonna add in some of our filling. So good. So I could have let this cook a little bit longer. It's still pretty saucy, like me. Uh, 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 uh. You bought a boom. And I'll add the rest of this cauliflower in there and let, let that cook away. Just in the, you know, for no waste. How's that look so far? So good. 
And then we add in our pickled veg. So yummy. Oh, and look at how look at how soft this has already gotten from the vinegar. It's like super pickly goodness. Because that's also a word. Super pickly goodness. Carrot. Awesome, awesome. Some jalapeno. Because you like it hot, right, Kenneth? Mm -hmm. All right, and then our amazing pickled red onions. Look at that color. Come on. So good. All right. Some sprouts for good measure in our health and some basil. What? What? You like basil, right, Kenneth? Yeah. Like so. A, bada boom, bada bing, topper on there. Give me a plate, Kenneth. gonna be a mess let me get my hands around and then we're gonna swap out hands here kind of here's your napkin you are sir here we go sir whoa I just put my hand over the lens I just pulled my mom sorry guys all right let's hear the verdict you're on TV salud, salud. drippy goodness mm -hmm. what do you think don't talk with your mouthful just kidding <laughs> Happy, satisfying, sweet, spicy, salty, sour. On top. On top. Happy, happy. So good. La la la. Banging. It's banging by me. Amazing. Oh, look at this. Kenneth is loving it so much. Oh, I thought you were going to take that off to eat it. I think I was burning. Were we burning? Amazing. Okay, so that, my friends. Here, I'm going to let Kenneth. Say bye, Kenneth. I'm going to let you finish up. He's going to finish eating. I'm gonna finish making up my my ban me bun. In the meantime, let's see what are we doing next week, you guys. I'm so happy to have you here. You have no idea. I have so much fun doing these videos, and as long as you guys keep watching, I'm gonna be able to keep doing them. So please keep staying tuned. As always, let me know what is next week. Is next week the 25th? Yes. Okay. So next week, um, like I was gonna say, if you have any ideas of what you want to see, let me know. Post it in the comments. Our amazing team up in the Malibu office will let me know. Uh, so next Sunday, the 25th already of November, my topic is magical mushrooms. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of dishes that are mushroom based, which is a really great meat substitute. There's Kenneth in the background eating. Um, but until then, my friends, have yourself a beautiful week. I know we will. We're super excited. We have our dear friend Luke Sellers with us. Um, I just saw him. He just arrived. He's going to be doing a couple of workshops for us here at Rhythmia this week. Um, and until we see you all here, much love. So, so, so much peace to you. So much love and light from Costa Rica. Yes, mom. Mom says, let's talk tomorrow. Mom, I'll FaceTime you in the morning and we'll, and we'll chat. I love you guys all so much. Have a beautiful week. Ciao.